G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to the MiG-19. Yes, that's right, we're having another look at the MiG-19. This time, we're going to be doing some clubbing. Yes, that's right, who needs missiles when you have guns and performance? Now, as you can see, it is Alternate History Kurimsk, which is... Never mind, Alternate History Berlin, which is actually one of my favourite maps in the entire game. It's uh, a little bit of a nostalgia trip, and it's also perhaps one of the more balanced maps. Uh, it also doesn't really have any quirks or anything like that. It's just a plain old simple flat line with plenty of beautiful buildings. It's reasonably appealing, I guess. Uh, and if you're the Allies, you have plenty of good pillboxes to strafe. If you're the Axis, well, you're not so lucky, but uh, you know. There's uh, always there's always something to do for ground units, but we're not going to be strafing ground units this game. We're in the MiG-19, and 140 rounds of ammo really isn't going to do anything. So, what we're going to do is our simple... Uh, you know, they say it's not an American team unless somebody crashes, but uh, I think it's not a jet match unless somebody crashes. Two MiG-19s gone early game, that's a... A big loss. That's a very big loss. Because the MiG-19 can pretty much out-energy most fighters in the entire game. You've really, really got to be a bit unwise, a bit uh, a bit careless with your energy if you're going to throw it away and get killed by something like an F2 Sabre or an F100 even. Whilst the F100 does have that pull and it has that incredible top speed, the MiG-19 has energy and for me against other 10.0 jets, energy tends to be the deciding factor. Uh, whereas if it's at 9.0, it tends to be speed, because speed is quite literally your energy at uh, such, a, such a tier. Since the MiG-19 actually performs faster in a dive than it does in a straight line at the deck, it can sometimes be worth climbing. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do our rush tactic, as usual. We're not going to fire at anyone, try not, try not to push head-ons, uh, because we just don't have the ammunition. And then when we have a couple of lemmings on our tail, just go into a vertical. Not vertical vertical, but a 10 degree climb, a 15 degree climb, and no one will be able to catch you. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm not using my uh, regular skin, I'm actually using a user skin. This one can be found on live.warthunder. I can't remember the name of the skinner. But uh, I'll try and put a link to it in the description. If it's not, someone let me know and I'll do that. But as you can see, I've come across no one. No one at all, and I'm getting close to the enemy airfield. Until I spot that F Sabre, who, uh, you know, to get from the airfield to there has to have climbed like a prop. And that's the one thing that you really should never do in jets. Never, ever climb at an angle. You always go level, in level flight, and then you pitch up at a 10 degree climb until you go back to about 800 kilometers per hour, something around like that for a 9.0 jet. For an earlier jet, you can pretty much go you know, a couple of steps lower, perhaps uh, if you're looking at the P80, maybe 400 kilometers per hour, um, coming from something like 700 or 800. But uh, in jets, you know, you wanna be fast and a slow jet is a dead jet. And as you can see already, this F Sabre has pretty much got a couple of enemies already trailing him, just because he's slow. And in jets, because it's such a small map uh, for for the combat compared to propeller aircraft, you're not you're not going to be able to make use of, for example, boom and zoom maneuvers. You have to use your speed. And if you don't have speed, you have to be able to use that energy. And that's what you can do in something like a MiG-17 or a MiG-15 against an F-100. And uh, speaking of unwisely using energy, there's an F1, F Hunter F1 who's going into a climb. I don't get any shots into him because I'm bad, but uh, it's getting close and surely I'm going to connect with something. Nope, not that one. Let's go for the F, F, this F Sabre, see what we can do. And I'm looking behind me and I'm seeing that F100 and it's not looking like a fun time for me. But that's okay, I can just put myself into a 10 degree climb. And with all the energy that I got from that dive, I can go right back up and uh, pretty much keep my energy over this little turning clusterfuck. My team is sort of spread out, but we've got a couple of people at altitude. This isn't really a great thing 
But uh, you can see we're pretty much outnumbered two to one, and it's not looking good at all. The enemies, however, they're going to throw that all away. You can see right now this A5 Saber has pretty much just done a 180 to try and ch catch this MiG-15, and he's put himself right behind another MiG-15. I'm going in, starting to get to supersonic speeds here. Uh, the F Saber there turns off to the left, and I can't follow. So I'm just going to go back up, use that energy retention, use that acceleration, uh, try and get away, get some separation, and uh, see what I can do to make this match work. The Hunter decides to pull off me, so that's a cue for me to go back down. I'm looking for him, I'm looking for him, there he is. And uh, I decide to perhaps try and get him to move with the, with the missile. I'm looking for a target for that missile, and I really I feel that if I can get if I can get a missile kill, I can sort of thin out the herds a little bit. And uh, here's where the lemming train really starts. There's an A5 saber there. I line up the guns nice and slow, and he gets blown to pieces. Venom there. He doesn't see me either for some odd reason, and as another one, really nice and easy. I. Should have loaded up the missile there, but uh, it probably wouldn't have worked anyway because the F-35 Saver distracted me just that little bit to not pursue that F-100 there. And I, I see the F-100 as a bigger threat to me than the Savers simply because they can catch me. And if if I can't be caught in a in a in a climb or in a dive or at altitude, that means that I have a clear advantage that I can use to win against the enemies that are remaining. And as you can see, they've all just gone in for a nice little lemming train. And that hunter, he's at the back. And I think I want that hunter next. He's uh, looking a little, little bit juicy there. The hunter, I've played a few games. And the games that I haven't been up tiered, I've done okay. But if you, if you put up against the MiG-19, there's not a whole lot you can do. The MiG-19 plays kind of like a hunter, but pretty much does everything better. Like low speed maneuvers, everything but rudder, rudder maneuvers and high speed maneuvers is what the hunter can do better. It's it's kind of not fair, honestly. I, I think the hunter is a little bit left behind. And it's kind of sad because the hunter was at one point the greatest plane in the game. I mean, that naturally happens, but one of the things that you, you can always guarantee is that your favorite plane won't be the favorite plane in six months' time. Everything constantly changes, just with a changing meta. Now that Hunter almost gets a nice shot on me, but I'm using that energy retention and that acceleration to literally just pull away from him, and there's nothing that he can do. He's gonna re he's gonna go below 600 kilometers per hour, and from that moment on, he becomes a brick. So he's gonna go right back down, and I'm able to slot in on his six. I look for a missile solution on him, but can't really find it. Uh, I'm also using the missile to keep him spotted, which is an interesting thing that you can do. I think maybe I can get it here. I'm looking for that for that opportunity, seeing if he's paying attention, seeing if, he, seeing if he's evading, and I fire. The missile tracks him, and then he pulls away. So he is listening, he is watching, and that's one of the things that you've got to be really careful of when you're firing missiles, because you've only got a couple of opportunities. Speaking of opportunities, I had a really nice opportunity to get a gun solution on him, but uh, popping a little bit of air brakes and using a little bit of throttle and flap control, I'm actually able to sit behind him, and I get a disgusting little kill there, and uh, that's pretty much all done with that hunter. There's nothing he could have done, and he did his job, he did the best that he could, and he just couldn't do anything. There's one of the last remaining players on the enemy team, and he's getting ganged by a bunch of MiGs, and there's nothing he can do. The enemy team has just fallen to pieces, and I come in, try and get a nice kill on him, and I miss. Yep, that's your life in the MiG. You really need to be careful with these guns. It's really difficult to actually get the guns on target. Something as simple as a left-hand turn can really, really throw off your aim, especially if you throw in a little bit of overroll, so that you roll just a little bit to get out of the way of the crappy rudder. And you can really throw off your MiG-19 enemies with just something as simple as that, where in, say, an F-2 Sabre, you could compensate for that with the rudder. You can't really do anything in a MiG-19 because it you're basically playing like you don't have a rudder. 
it's kind of it's kind of difficult to get used to, and that's probably why I poorly received the MiG-19 at first. Right now, it's looking pretty good. It's in a pretty decent situation, but you need your support jets, and one of the things that the MiG-19 is kind of uh, not lacking, but uh, could have better are support jets, such as the MiG-15 BIS. I heard it got a micro nerf a couple of days ago, and I'm extremely disappointed. I really, really wish that they hadn't done that. That's one of the things that kind of makes me sad. I I just wish that, you know, Gaijin wouldn't mess with things more than they need to, and the MiG-15 itself used to be fairly good. It was, in fact, I was really enjoying it, and now they've gone and micro-nerfed it, uh, or ninja nerfed it, it's kind of difficult again, and eh, I, I really wish they wouldn't do that. But uh, what we've got is what we have to use, so I guess MiG-17 will be the best the best jet to support with, and I guess that's what we're going to have to go with. So, that's pretty much the end of the match for me. I don't get another kill, I think that Vortor gets run down by another MiG-19, and I just go in for a nice, gentle landing, taking my time, haven't received any damage, but I'm out of ammo, so I can't really chase the Vortor anymore. And that's one of the issues with the MiG-19, it doesn't have great endurance when it comes to weaponry. It only has two missiles and 140 cannon rounds, Whereas the F-100 has something like 600 cannon rounds between four guns and four missiles. Uh, and the missiles are slightly better, I would say. I think the F-100's missiles track a little bit better. Uh, whereas the MiG-19, you have to pretty much get uh, an, an enemy that's going in a straight line and nothing else to get a really nice missile lock and a nice kill. Although, I have to say, I think they are satisfying. They are definitely very satisfying. Maybe maybe the F-100's rockets, or the, the AIM-9's, are a little bit more satisfying to get a kill with. Probably just because the F-100 looks absolutely stunning. And watching that missile just track with that beautiful plume of, of uh, exhaust, and then come down on an enemy just with an iron fist is, is beautiful to watch. And it's just something that I don't think I'm ever going to get bored of. That's probably the beauty with Rank 6. And I can't wait to see extra additions with perhaps more missiles. Maybe we can get, maybe we're looking too far forward, but F4 Phantom, maybe Hunter F6, maybe extra stuff that will make the matchmaker kind of interesting, kind of cool. Maybe we could have F2 Sabres with aim lines. Maybe? Maybe that would be a little bit too far. Perhaps F84Ds, F84Hs, F84Ks. This will be really interesting. And now that we have these in the game, you know, we can sort of dream big now. And it's really, really exciting. But uh, for now, we're not stuck with, but we've got these toys to play with, and I think we should make the most of them. Learn how to use missiles, learn how to use the supersonic characteristics, high altitude performance, learn that new meta, and wait for everything to sort of settle in. And uh, it's looking extremely good. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the way Gaijin's managed to implement this. And uh, it's a thumbs up from me. Anyway, ladies and gents, Take care, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll catch you next time.